Hey everybody, welcome to The Trench. My name is Christian, and today we're going to talk about what Christians can learn from CrossFit. I've been doing CrossFit for a couple of years now, and I love it. It is just, I mean, it's just, well, let me show you. It's awesome, but a lot of times it gets a bad rap, as if CrossFit were the only thing that CrossFitters talked about, as if it were some kind of cult. I can assure you it is definitely not a cult, but it is more than simply just a good way to exercise. Like other kinds of physical activity, like running or snowboarding, CrossFit does have a certain culture around it, and I believe that the culture of CrossFit in particular can teach Christians something about what it means to be a community. One of the best things about CrossFit is that it attracts a diverse array of people. Men and women from all different races, beliefs, sizes, walks of life, and fitness levels come to CrossFit. It's not like a trendy health club that only appeals to a particular kind of person. Person. Some CrossFitters are college athletes, some are grandparents who just want to stay fit so they can play with their grandkids, and others, like me, are just fat dudes who got tired of sitting on the couch eating themselves to death. All these diverse folks, folks who may otherwise never meet each other, come together in the same space because they're gathered around the same goal, fitness. This formation of community is not the aim of CrossFit as much as it's the consequence. Community is just what happens when these people gather together around a shared vision, a vision toward which all struggle uniquely, whether jock or grandparent. What matters is that we do it together. What if Christians were more like that? What if, when we gather as Christ's body, we were all united around the shared goal of God's kingdom, like we claim to be at the beginning of every divine liturgy? What if we didn't just say we were the church, but we actually acted like it? If when we assembled at the church, we were actually oriented toward God's kingdom, our churches would look a lot different, wouldn't they? What if we gathered in the name of a kingdom with no more division, with no more poverty or hunger, with no more fear? Wouldn't we see categories like cradle and convert, rich and poor, Greek and Russian begin to disappear? Instead of bonding over superficial categories like musical interests or ethnic commonalities, perhaps we would see more bonding around our shared vision of eternal life in Christ, in God's coming kingdom. This is how true community, a sense of we-ness emerges, that we are here for the kingdom, that we are the church, a community like no other, where all are welcome, regardless of who they are or what they've done. And this means that in the church, much like in CrossFit, we must make room for people's weaknesses and imperfections. In CrossFit, everyone who goes to class does the same workout of the day, or WOD. The path toward fitness has already been laid out for you. You just need to walk, run, kettlebell swing, and power clean your way down it. And while the workout is essentially the same for everyone, it can be scaled appropriately to match each person's fitness level, so that everyone present is working to the best of their ability, whether or not they can do 100 pull-ups. People come to CrossFit not despite being weak, but because they are weak and because they want to get stronger. And there's no judgment about their weakness, there's just celebration about their desire to get better. But can we in the church really say that we're like this? Of course, we say we're all sinners, but too often it seems that we expect people to show up as already perfected versions of themselves. Or even worse, we seem to enjoy condemning those who do make mistakes. But what if Christians actually lived into the truth that we're a bunch of sinners, each of us fallen but forgiven? We need to remember that the church is not a museum of saints. It is a hospital for sinners. The church is not a CrossFit gym full of rich fronings, the fittest man on earth. The church is a CrossFit gym full of Christian Gonzaleses, chubby hubbies who are tired of having flabby abbies. It is true that as Christians we have a prescribed way of fasting, of living, just as CrossFit has a prescribed workout. But CrossFit also makes room for people to scale the workout so that they don't give up, but rather that they get stronger. And this is perhaps the most important thing that we can learn from CrossFit, that weakness needs support. A person who can't do a pull-up today may, through some hard work and encouragement, be able to do one tomorrow. This is why CrossFit doesn't simply make room for people's weaknesses, but also surrounds them with a community of support as they push themselves to do the best that they can. Often in CrossFit, it isn't those who finish first who get the loudest cheers. It's those who finish last, being bolstered, supported, carried through by those who have already finished. In Hebrews 12, we are told that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, the saints who have gone before us in following Christ. But what if that cloud of witnesses included the people standing next to us in the pews? 
What if we Christians were more of a community of support, encouraging others to be their best selves while also acknowledging their current limitations without judgment? What if we didn't just lose sheep, but what if we worked hard for their return? Our call as we turn a little more fully towards God's coming kingdom is to make the church a safer place for those of us, for all of us, who are stumbling on the path toward Christ. As Christians, we are called to be the light in the dark world, a community that fully accepts people while also lifting them up and calling them to something higher. But this can only be done as we learn to lean on the unconditional love and support that comes from our loving Lord. So join the fight, live orthodoxy, remember to like and subscribe, and join the rest of us inside the trench.